Hi, and uh, welcome to this installment of Frank and Mary here on Martha's Vineyard. If you haven't seen this show before, my name is Art Bergeron. I'm an elder law attorney. I work at a firm called Myrick O'Connell. There are 70 of us, biggest firm outside of Boston. Um, and I come here every other Thursday because I really like Martha's Vineyard and I do nothing but elder law here. But this show, uh, as you know, is not about elder law. It's about my friends Frank and Mary and their kids, Peter, Paul, and Mary Jr. If you've seen one of my presentations, you know that Frank and Mary's goal is to live in their house until they die and be buried in the backyard. And if they live here, they don't even, they definitely want to go to Nantucket, but they don't want to go anyplace else but here. So the question is, who are the people you need to know and what are the programs you need to know about to stay right here? Now, with me is the person that I sucked into being my co-host a number of years ago, my friend Sandy Cordobi, because she just tends to know everybody. And yet again, she found a great person for us to talk to today. So Sandy, whom do we have today to talk to? Thank you, Arthur. And we have a very dear old friend of mine. We were just talking before the show about how long we've been working together, and we think it's probably better than 15 years. Well, that's a long time. And this is my dear friend and colleague, um, Ellen McCabe who is a community relations specialist for the VNA of Cape Cod and the Islands. Ellen is a, a nurse practitioner, and we've been working in home care and hospice together for a gajillion years at least. For like, oh, that's a long time. Well, that's a long that time. That is like a long time. And so Ellen agreed to come on and talk to us today about um, her work in the um, honoring choices and um, advanced care planning arena. Exciting. And that's very exciting. And Ellen, and when we were talking before, we said uh, Ellen, there were a couple of moments, Ellen, when you even almost ended up coming to Martha's Vineyard, right? I but did. you never could quite pull yes. the trigger, right? It, it was as if uh, there was an ad in the paper that said we had an open bed at our house. And <laughs> another family member needed a caregiver, so. And it just it keeps, never. Keeps us close to close to our home base. I got it, I got it. And you're originally from the Midwest. You were talking yeah. about how, how, how the Cape, Cape Cod, because you live on Cape Cod, yep. your husband's from a Cape Cod, yep. or genuine Cape Cod, yep. right? Right, but, the, but the, the Cape reminded you of, of Lake Michigan. Now I've never heard that <laughs> Well, I don't before. know if but the Cape reminds me Not of Lake exactly Michigan, like but it, the fact yeah. that I was near water made me feel absolutely at home, yeah. and I would never want to be anywhere else. Yeah. So welcome, welcome, welcome. Thank welcome. you. So, so what? Are, so what? What are you doing with? Are you on with, working with on the conversations project? It's, it seems to me I had heard, or that Sandy and I had heard. Or no, I I had heard from a woman, heard? state on the in the statewide organization, Patty Webster. That. So when I was talking to her once about the Conversations Project, and I said, so can you tell me the best example of where the Conversations Project is really working here in Massachusetts? And, and she said, oh, well, really, it's, it's, it's on the Cape, right? Yes. I was like, that's pretty exciting. Right? So I am part of a group with Tina Soares and Dr. Guadagnoli yeah. uh, at um, Cape Cod Healthcare. And they started a, a group called the Quality of Life uh, Task Force um, at, that is also called C Care Planning Cape Cod. Mm -hmm. And it is to try to get the word out about the importance of healthcare planning, healthcare, having a healthcare um, proxy, choosing a healthcare agent, and then all of the conversations and ongoing conversations that really allow our loved ones to honor the choices that we have made throughout our lives so that it is not about planning how you're going to die but really how you're going to live until you die planning how you're going to live mm -hmm. and and so how are you how are you doing that how well i think that trying to help people understand that developing a health care plan um, which includes a health care proxy is not something you do when you get sick. It's not something that you do when you get old, that it's a healthy part of, um, component of your healthcare lifelong. So for every age. So when I was a child, the type of healthcare I needed was different than when I was an adolescent, than when I was having babies, than when I, where I am in my life now. So my healthcare plan is really meant to follow me throughout all of the changes that I have in my life. If I start planning for anything, whether it's a trip, if I start planning the morning for a week-long trip I'm gonna take in the afternoon, I'm not necessarily gonna have everything I need to be, uh, 
success, successful or secure in that um, venture. The same is true. Like, I don't want to start healthcare planning in the midst of a healthcare crisis. It's going to be hard to let my family members know what's important to me. And so, trying to engage people in a plan, I, I sometimes have used this example with Sandy that if we were, um, if there was a fire in the house, we wouldn't want to gather everybody in the living room and say, hey, there's a fire. Let's get an idea <laughs> what we want to do. Let's get a plan here. Yeah. Let's get a, yeah. Like, like the, everybody needs to get out of the house. So right. if I start my healthcare plan in the emergency department in the midst of a crisis, everybody is going to have competing needs, thoughts, um, ideas that if we start planning at a time where there's not a crisis, we can have a better discussion about what that might look for each one of us. So now I got a question for the both of you, right? Because you both do this. And mm -hmm. I remember that, that and, and Sandy and I talked about this issue a lot. We're kind of spending a lot of this year focusing on this issue. We think it's really important. But I understand that. So I'm, I'm, I'm talking from the perspective of my many, many elder law clients that you try to encourage to do this stuff. So certainly there are some folks that are in crisis, right? There are some who are dying, actually, right? Um, and, and, or they're really going through a lot of this stuff. Then, and, but there are many also who aren't, right? And who are, maybe they're, maybe they're in their 90s but very healthy. More often though, they're like in their 60s and their 70s. They haven't, they've never actually done any advance, any, any talking about the planning. And they, so. And they're not alone. And they're not alone. And so what is, and so, and they don't, they're not clear unless, you know, something has happened, unless they get a cancer diagnosis, unless they get a stent, right? They're not clear as to what kind of healthcare planning they might be wanting to talk about because they're kind of not knowing what, when, what their body will do, which won't be just kind of their normal living day by day. So for them, for them, how does that conversation work, right? Well, I think that, so. Is that a fair question? There's yeah. a, a yeah. couple of pieces to that, which is one, they do surveys every year um, that talk about what, where do you want to be when you die? What do you want to be doing when you die? Who do you want to be around you? So the top three answers for I think the, the consecutive 18 years they've been doing the study, I want to be at home, I want to be sleeping, and I want my family around me. But still, the majority of people die in hospitals, being cared for by strangers. And so the fact that I have that as a wish, it is just a wish, unless we put some reinforcements to allow our choices to be honored. And so having a conversation, the, really the very first conversation is the hardest one to have. Everyone thereafter is easy because you've already broken the ice. And, and Ellen was telling me over breakfast one day about a really fun way that <laughs> you started the conversation yeah. um, because your parents hadn't really is that okay to yes. talk about that? So that your parents hadn't really done much about it yet. So I'd love you to, to tell Arthur and our viewers um, how you got that conversation started. So my folks live in the Midwest mm -hmm. and we were far away. So uh, I knew that I wanted to have them do um, some formal healthcare proxy. And so between Massachusetts and Illinois, the laws were different. Right. But um, the document, Five Wishes, had all of the components that both states um, could use, like not all of the pieces of a Five Wishes are valid in Massachusetts, right. but all of it was valid in Illinois. So we, my husband and I got the idea that we would tell them, you know, we want to get do these Five Wishes, but we want someone else in the family to know about it. So we're going to sit down and do these and would you mind being our witnesses, et cetera. <laughs> so we started having this conversation and my dad said, And were, and were you were this, just, this on the phone or were you, you, were, no, you were there? No, we, we were there for were a regular there. visit. I get it. And so my dad said, well, do you have more forms? Like, why don't we all do it? I said, great idea. What a concept. So yeah. we started doing it and you know, probably about 
five minutes in to going through all the sections, we were laughing and telling stories and talking about our beliefs and our values and the things that mattered most. A lot of it was surprising, the things my parents were saying about what their hopes and dreams were for their own um, health plan. Mm -hmm. And um, so we started writing them all down and I just felt immediately relieved that if anything were to happen and I would need to step in as an advocate, that I would have a baseline knowledge about what they would want. So the, my sister comes in because she came over because my husband and I were and the kids were visiting. And she said, oh, are you guys playing a game in there? Because she could hear us <laughs> laughing. And I said, well, anyway. I said, well, no, we're doing our health care proxies. And in a very short period of time, they're like, how long would it take us to catch up? And they sat down. And they so in one fell swoop, six of us had our five wishes done. And what I was saying to Sandy was that initial sort of deep breath to say, how are we going to broach this where it doesn't feel like, oh, I want you to do this because you're older because or you're because old. you are going to have health things coming up, that instead it was a natural, normal um, thing that we were doing together because, not because we were sick, but because we were a member of a family. And that that's the thing families can do together to um, give themselves support around um, planning for the what ifs in life. And um, my sister and her husband did them and she still refers to that weekend because they ended up having a health crisis in their family. And she said, the fact I had these recently done and that we could pull them out and that even though um, we only needed it for a moment in time because everything turned out okay, she's like, I felt so relieved that we had these um, discussions very recently. And we had those discussions regularly thereafter and there was no nervousness because we'd already had a conversation once about it. Because you already had the conversation. Mm -hmm. and, and, I, and I suppose now that you're describing that, you know, it, it, even among between spouses, between me and my wife, how often do you talk about this, right? You just don't, right? So you might not even really know how your spouse feels about kind of what uh, what, how the, what, how to deal with those issues. So Arthur, yeah. I hope my husband wouldn't mind that I would say this, but so in this discussion, we started talking about burial and what we wanted to do, be done with our remains and stuff. And so, so if your husband calls right to the producer, yeah. there's going to be like this gap in the tape right here. So we, just, know, want you, right? we, just, want you, we just want you to know that. Okay. So, okay. So, and that's okay. Um, so I won. We'd been married about 20 years at the yeah. time. And yeah. I just assumed he wanted what I wanted. So I was like, oh, so Steve yeah. and I are going to be cremated. And he was like, hold the phone. Who said that? <laughs> and I, I would have gone to... I would have really fought to say, I, I'm positive this is what Steve wanted. But spoiler alert, it wasn't. <laughs> he wanted to be buried at sea. And I was like, first, you've never served in the military. And second, like, am I, I going to... Actually, wanted to be buried at Lake, in Lake Michigan. Because <laughs> <laughs> it reminded no, him no, of no, the No, no, no. Nantucket no. Sound, no, Arthur. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> He's a Cape Cod guy. He's a Cape Cod guy. So, so, but the, so, yeah. so I said, am I taking you out on the day sailor and just shoving you off the back? Yeah. Like, and, and it, all joking aside, we did start to try to research how could you be buried at sea if you didn't die at sea right. and um, et cetera. So, he, and he wanted to be like buried, buried, like the body goes in as opposed I to he gets cremated. I think initially, but in now he's settled on some sort of yeah. reef like thing. Yeah, yeah. Reef like that. Reef, like R E. Oh, oh, reef. Sorry, my Midwestern uh, showing. R E E F. A reef like thing? Yes, yeah, uh, being part of some living um, structure at the bottom thing. of the ocean. That's great. Yeah. So, That's great. but I never would have known had we not tried to have this conversation that was going to benefit my parents, but it ended up benefiting us as a, a couple. I can, my husband died when he was 45, you know, very suddenly. And we hadn't had the conversation. And that was a big part of our oldest at the time was 18, um, I think, right around there. And, um, and yeah, he was 18. And so I wanted him to be part of the decision making. But what a huge issue that was for an 18-year-old to be part of a discussion about burial versus cremation. Mm -hmm. So 
I wish we had had that conversation. You know, right. you just never really think about it. And I'm so glad that this project is is got such a big focus this year because it's so important. Um, for just a second, Ellen, could you just touch quickly on what is five wishes for our viewers that don't know what that means? Right. Oh, so the five wishes uh, was um, a, a Robert Wood Johnson grant funded project and it was created many years ago um, to support people in trying to think about advanced care planning. Mm -hmm. So the first section is about who you want to be your health care agent. The second section is if I'm in a condition that I'm not expected to recover from, a persistent vegetative state in a, a coma where I'm not expected to regain Terry consciousness. Shibo. Yeah. Then the third thing is um, how comfortable do I want to be? Do I, am I a person who can tolerate a lot of pain or am I a person who wants to be medicated? Um, you know, if I breathe heavy. <laughs> um, right. Is, um, so you how, get to decide how important yeah. not being in pain versus being in pain. And I remember Sandy giving one of those cases of, mm -hmm. you yeah. know, a person who said, I want to be in pain because I really want to know that I'm, I'm alive, you know. It tells me I'm alive if I can feel it, yeah. Right. yeah. Yeah. And then, um, how do I want to be treated? Do I want to be touched? Do I want to be alone? Do I want a lot of people around me? Do I want music playing? Do I want, so what are the, the things that make me feel at ease? And then the last is, uh, what do I want my loved ones to know? And my favorite, probably my favorite line in the whole document is there's a line that says, I want you to do what I want you to do, even if you don't want to do it which is the ultimate permission for a family member to say, as a healthcare agent, this is not what I want to do, it's what my loved one wants me to do. And so it's, it's a different place. So me as a loving person, I don't want my friend to go. So what I want is very different than what Sandy has told me she wants. Right. So instead, I've got to get out of the place of what I want, but instead to say, I hold a very um, honored role of um, being the voice for someone who is voiceless. So she's trusted me with her proxy. So if we were in a union shop and we both had one, art, one vote art and you right. couldn't make it, I couldn't say, oh, yay, Ellen gets two votes. No, <laughs> no, I, no. <laughs> I have to vote the way Arthur would vote and the way Ellen would vote. But so in the world of healthcare proxy, yeah. that document says when you choose this agent, they promise to be the voice you would have that you, that you don't have right now because right. you're unconscious or unable. And, and, and what I try to emphasize to folks here is, as opposed to other states where that the so-called so healthcare directive or a mm -hmm. living will is actually legally enforceable and, and, and so doctors and everybody is, is bound by it, that's not true here. It's what the one, one of the states where it's well. not legally enforceable. So, so, the, so the, the question of trusting your, health, your person with your proxy to make these decisions correctly is everything. Absolutely. Right, because if the proxy is is gonna is crossing you, you you stop. <laughs> you just like, so you really need to try, Choosing and you need well to and you need to know, key. and they need to know, and they need to know. And it doesn't have to be your spouse. It doesn't even have to be a relative, um, but it has to be someone who you believe knows what your values, beliefs, your cultural connection is that they can act on your behalf. Somebody that you have had that conversation with. Mm -hmm. And has agreed that even if it's difficult for them to see their friend or their mom or dad or brother yep. or sister go, that they feel that they can make the decision that you've asked them to make, even if, if it makes them really sad to, to have to make that decision. Many times I'm sitting with um, clients of mine at Horizons Geriatrics and, um, and, and I'm sitting with an elder and I have the son and the daughter both sitting there who are my age at that point. And, and I say, and, and who is the healthcare proxy? And, and there'll be a joke saying, oh, well, it's, it's my brother, it's not me, because mom knows I'll never let her go. And, and right. I applaud them for that, because I think that so often we do think that it should automatically be the spouse or the son or the daughter. And, and, and just by virtue of the decisions that you're making at that moment and the situation that you're in, if you're having to make them at that moment, that is a high powered, you know, very emotional time, and is that something that that person wants to do? 
and, and they shouldn't have to if they don't want to. And, um, and so it should be really thoughtful decision making around who is that person that can do that and do they understand what you've, um, what you're deciding. Uh, April 16th this year is National Healthcare Decisions Day. Um, NHDD, National Healthcare Decisions Day, and it's in, and so there'll be a lot of emphasis around. All Mark cars didn't invent that one. <laughs> no. That right. isn't. But that Arthur, isn't sound like it's because uh, true. what are the true two story. guarantees there are in life? <laughs> exactly. That's exactly right. Death and taxes. Death and taxes. That's, that's right. And that's yeah, why that's it's April sixteenth because it's the day oh. after tax day. <laughs> Oh, you, you missed that, that part I'm, of the class, not did that you? I'm, not that I'm slow. <laughs> right? Who would have ever guessed that? But, right? it's, but it is a time. I, I think sort of unofficially we, we'd like to think about um, having these kinds of conversations around the holidays at Thanksgiving when families are together. But I don't know. I mean, people found it very difficult to think about, you know, is that a time to have such a serious conversation while the kids are running around and, um, and people are just trying to catch up because they haven't seen each other in many months. And um, so I love the fact that um, National Healthcare Decisions Day is the day after tax day. And it's just in its own its own little special it thing. It is its own little special thing. So, now, so I was going to say, going back to um, what is the five wishes, but yeah. When I said that the rules in Massachusetts were different in Illinois, the Five Wishes document was entirely accepted as a living will with an embedded health care proxy oh, in, Illinois. Really? in Illinois. But in Massachusetts, the only valid part of that document, not that it's not good information for loving people to right. have for each other, is that the only valid portion is the health care proxy because in Massachusetts, the health care proxy is the only valid health care planning document. And, and that's true, but, 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 but as you say, having the information down, 100%. let me put it this way, I have, so I've been practicing now mm, 43 years, I have yet to see there be a legal fight, right, regarding stuff that is in one of those, you know, a directive, that, well, mm -hmm. like somebody's not going to follow it, you know, I mean, if it's all written down, right, of course you're going to follow it. Right. Even though, even though, although families it, are tricky, and, and but so so I'm just <laughs> there's I, so always an out of town daughter. There's, and there's, yes, yes, it's going to come swooping in and say, wait, there's, no, there's, wait. There's, there's always we that call stuff. that the nephew from Peoria. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Someone far removed from the current situation. Doctor Tim all Guy. Sudden, <laughs> all in. But and, and by the way, one of the other things that you were mentioning really kind of struck a chord because I know I remember thinking about this. You know, there's always this question of the the relatives that want to get there before you die. Right? So mm -hmm. that it's like you were saying, not wanting to let somebody go, wanting to make sure that you see the person, right? Well, as far as the person is concerned, that may not be a big deal. So, you, so yeah. to be able to have that in their document saying, no, it is not important to me that I absolutely see everybody before I die. It's, so it's like you're also giving everybody permission to not be crazy and feel guilty for the rest of their lives because they couldn't make the plane, you know, or because there was a snowstorm and something happened. So just having all that information well, in Well, and many years later, my mom still has that document and it looks like it's been run over by a semi. <laughs> it's got cross outs and circles and every time we go to a funeral, she adds two more songs she that edits. she can't oh. do without. And it's like, Mom, we are going to be there for hours <laughs> if we play all these songs. So, but so this is not just my wife, it, who, who inevitably now, when we were at mass, says, "Oh, and I really want you to put that, that one, one in." That one too. I'm like, but honey, <laughs> there's like seven of them now. But this truly, is going to be like a hootenanny. nanny. But, this but isn't going to be exactly, a mass. Exactly. You know? So, but but truly, that is more precious to me yeah. when I see that document and how earnest she is in forming not just what would um, help her develop security, but she knows that it's helping me. Because when her mom died, there were no documents and it was extremely traumatic. And um, I just feel like she would never want us as her girls to go through what she went through. Because she went through it, yeah. right. I right. think as much as it's very important to to have this discussion around planning and um, but I'd like to make sure that we also touch very quickly on the unplanned yes. and, um, and, and the fact that by virtue of what it is, people sort of directly connect picking a health care proxy and, and filling out their end of life wishes like, do you want to be resuscitated? Do you want dialysis? Those kind, the most, as we call it, medical orders for life 
sustaining treatment, the bright pink piece of paper. As much as it's important to do all that, we, we sort of connect that to being aged right. and sick. I also want to touch very quickly before the show ends on, um, and, and again, another um, conversation that Ellen and I have had because we talk about death and dying constantly. Nobody <laughs> wants to hang around with us anymore. <laughs> but, um, but I want to talk about 18-year-olds for just a second if we could, and I know that this is about our elder couple, but uh, while we no. have the expertise of Ellen here, I wanna talk about 18 year olds. Um, because one of the things that people don't think about, and we are getting um, Healthy Aging Martha's Vineyard is doing amazing work at the high school, um, talking about this with those about to leave and go to college next year and their parents. Um, do you realize that when your 18 year old goes off to college, um, or just turns 18 and, and is still living in your house, if something happens and they end up in a bad accident or somehow, you know, unconscious in an emergency room for whatever reason, the fact that you are their parent means, means very little. They may be interested in taking yeah. some medical history from you at that point, but they'll give you no information. But truly, you know, I think some people do assume that Massachusetts is a hierarchical state, which we're not. If that it doesn't go through, oh, my spouse, and if not my spouse, my parent, if not right. my parent, my child, that that, that health care proxy document is key, and if we don't have that, then it's court-appointed guardianship. That's right. Mm -hmm. That's right. So we were in freshman orientation, and the parents and the children, or not children, young adults, were separated, and so in our section, our, the leader said, does anybody here have a child that is already 18? So my husband and I raised our hands, and several other pe parents in the room, and they said, well, if um, you go home tomorrow and something happens to your child, we will not call you because they are 18. So we want to talk to everybody in the room <laughs> <Right now. laughs> about healthcare proxy. And so I really don't know what else he said because all I could think of is, when is the break? I need to get this thing signed. I'm filling it out entirely right. for my young adult in the other room putting me down as the primary, right. <laughs> my husband Even down. Even though that's the last person he'd want, right? Yeah. <laughs> wow, well, so, listen to the right. rest of the well, story. So that's in right. the other room, the kids were being told, hey, it's your first adult, maybe your first adult decision you're making on your own. You don't have to pick your parents. You can pick your roommate, you can pick your RA, you can right. pick a friend. So unbeknownst to me, that's his talk. Yeah. And we get back together and I said, hey, here, honey, here's the healthcare proxy already filled out by right. me. And um, so he kind of teases me and he said, well, we were just told we don't have to pick our parents. We could pick anybody. Yeah. So I said, well, I don't know how long we have, so I'm going to cut to the cheeks. I will offset your tuition and you will sign here. <laughs> <laughs> so he's like, okay, I'll sign, I'll sign. <laughs> so, but, but the, 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 then a couple of weeks later, he called me and he said, all kidding aside, Mom, there's a kid on my floor that's unconscious in the hospital with alcohol poisoning, and his roommate is his health care agent. And he sa I said, well, is the kid at the kid's bedside? And he said, no, he's going to school. He's going to his classes like normal. He's very freaked out. And I said, well, has he called the you know, if he can't be an agent, that's no problem. Yeah. Just call the parents and, yeah. and, you know, appoint them as an alternate. And he said, oh, no, he's afraid because he doesn't want the kid to be mad at him when he wakes up. And I said, well, unfortunately, he signed up for a very adult role. And so I would like you to go down the hallway and tell him, this is not your last friend. You'll make other friends. Yeah. Call the parents. Suck, suck it up. <laughs> exactly. Suck it up. We are, we are close to the end oh, of our I'm so time. Oh, no, no, this was wonderful. And I, and I think this is a good segue just to mention, we've had Patty Moore on the show, who's really been kind of one of the leaders of this here. And I think, like kudos to Patty for, for I mean, for Sandy and I, we tend to be focusing more on, on seniors, right? Yeah. But, but she's really emphasized and that, and, and her focus has really been on making sure that everybody has got it, which is just- The number one job. reason between Terrific. 18 and 29 that someone would not be able to make their own health care decisions is an accident. Is an accident. So by virtue, we cannot plan for that. 
I can plan for my future, my husband could plan for our future, maybe right. all the things would be expected that would happen to our age group, right. but it's most important for um, a person of that age to develop awareness that this is part, this is as important as my insurance card, that I have somebody who knows me right. and who can speak to my values, my beliefs, my goals, my hopes, my dreams in that room when somebody is asking about these medical decisions. Right, when something, when something bad comes quick, comes yeah. quick. So thank you so much. You have the most interesting friends. You keep popping up with these folks. It's wonderful to meet you. I, be I bet you'll be on again soon. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this and it kind of you know, helps you really think about these issues which I think we, we really know are really important. We hope to see you, uh, we look forward to seeing you in the next installment of Frank and Mary here on Martha's Vineyard. Thank you very much. Thank you, Sandy. Thank you, Thank you Ellen. Thank you. Thank you.